This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Balloon incident reveals more than spying as competition with China intensifies. According to the New York Times, a Chinese surveillance balloon was seen floating over nuclear silos in Montana, near Kansas City and was eventually shot down by a Sidewinder missile off the coast of South Carolina. The event highlights the lack of communication between Washington and Beijing, even after 22 years since the collision of an American spy plane and a Chinese fighter. The balloon incident was not the first of its kind, with another one in flight over South America and many observed instances over the U.S. and the Pacific in previous years. Spy balloons, equipped with high-tech sensors, are making a comeback as they can pick up radio, cellular, and other transmissions that satellites cannot detect from space. The U.S.'s National Security Agency and United States Strategic Command have been remaking communications with nuclear weapon sites, making them a natural target for China's Ministry of State Security. The incident adds to China's argument that everyone engages in such activities and comes at a moment when Democrats and Republicans are competing to show strength against China. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Why is China taking aim at grassroots officials for lying flat? According to South China Morning Post, the Communist Party of China is revving up its propaganda, disciplinary, and personnel apparatus to get China's officials to shed their fatigue and grudges from three years of battling COVID-19 and embrace a drive for development. A Politburo meeting on December 6 focused on revitalizing China's ailing economy and called for unleashing the whole of society's initiative to renew growth in the face of disruption caused by COVID-19, a major softening of the world economy, and pressures from decoupling and sanctions by the U.S. and its Western allies. The initiative and morale of rank-and-file officials had dwindled in recent years due to mounting disciplinary pressures, higher downside risks, and pay cuts as a result of local governments' excessive spending on COVID-19 testing and quarantine. Beijing is trying to mobilize all its party's apparatus to reverse the trend of declining drive among officials. Following a clear political signal from Beijing, China's provinces and cities are resorting to various campaigns to restore official spirits, including incentives for those who achieve breakthroughs, giving more powers to decision-makers, and naming and shaming slackers. The Communist Party's top anti-corruption watchdog vowed to tackle lying flat cadres and promote those who dared to tackle problems. Critics argue that the gala's satirical sketch was not very fair to grassroots cadres because they have faced a worsening working environment and bureaucratic boundaries. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Biden prepares for State of the Union speech as China tensions, job gains take center stage. The Wall Street Journal report, President Biden will give his first State of the Union address on Tuesday, February 28, 2022. Following the speech, Mr. Biden will travel to Wisconsin and Florida to highlight different aspects of his administration's policies. The week is expected to be dominated by questions over the Chinese surveillance balloon that the U.S. shot down, a matter that has led to criticism from Republicans and concern from lawmakers of both parties. Mr. Biden is expected to talk about his legislative accomplishments and seek common ground with Democrats and Republicans. The GOP captured control of the House in the midterm elections and party leaders have pledged numerous investigations of the Biden administration and finances of his son, Hunter Biden. Mr. Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have begun discussing how to raise the federal debt ceiling, 
but the two sides remain far from a deal. The president will likely point to low unemployment and signs of easing inflation, while seeking to reassure the public amid fears of a recession. Foreign policy, including the war in Ukraine, is expected to play a prominent role in the speech. The Chinese balloon incident only adds to ongoing frictions between the U.S. and China. The Biden administration has worked to reduce these tensions, but Republicans have urged for a more aggressive stance towards China on trade and technology issues. A Washington Post-ABC News poll shows that 42 percent of voters overall approve of President Biden's handling of the presidency while 53 percent disapprove, and 37 percent of voters approve of his handling of the economy while 58 percent disapprove. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. U.S.-China Relations a long history of balloons, bombs, and drones. Bloomberg report, the recent downing of a suspected Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina is the latest in a history of confrontations between the U.S. and China, particularly in the South China Sea. June 2022, a Chinese Su-30 fighter jet had an unsafe interaction with a U.S. C-130 special operations plane in the South China Sea. China's military pilots were said to have been acting more aggressively in the region. January 2022, Chinese forces tracked and warned the USS Benfold and it entered waters Beijing claims near the Paracel Islands in the South China Sea. The U.S. Navy said its mission was in accordance with international law. May 2021, Beijing said the USS Curtis Wilbur illegally entered its territorial waters near the Paracel Islands, which the U.S. denied. September 2018, the guided missile destroyer USS Decatur got perilously close to its Chinese counterpart in contested waters in the South China Sea. December 2016, China scooped up an underwater U.S. drone in international waters. The drone was returned following a formal protest by the U.S. April 2001, a Midair collision of a U.S. Navy EP-3E intelligence aircraft with a Chinese J-811 fighter jet about 70 miles from the Chinese island of Hainan led to an international dispute. May 1999, the U.S. struck China's embassy in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, killing three people. President Bill Clinton apologized to Beijing for what he called an accident. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. There are signs a stronger China rebound will boost oil, i.e. a. Bloomberg Report the head of the International Energy Agency, IEA, Fadi Bayral, believes that China's economy could experience a stronger-than-anticipated rebound, leading to an increase in demand for oil and natural gas. According to Bayral, there are first indications that China's growth will be faster than previously expected, and the country is projected to contribute to around half of a forecast increase in global oil demand of almost 2 million barrels per day this year. Jet fuel consumption in China is already very, very strong, which is likely to further increase oil demand if it continues to grow at the same pace. The rising demand for oil in China will also have a major impact on liquefied natural gas, as the volumes currently available are among the lowest in history, according to IEA data. Despite Bayral's optimism, oil faced a third consecutive monthly loss in January due to concerns over rising U.S. stockpiles and uncertainty over demand, and OPEC and its allies are being exceedingly cautious about adding barrels to the oil market until demand increases. A price cap on Russian fuel exports, including diesel, 
imposed by the group of seven nations in the European Union, could lead to initial supply difficulties, but India may have the opportunity to increase its diesel exports in the coming months, according to Bayral. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Watch out, China Incorporated is going global. Again. Bloomberg Report, number of Chinese industrial firms have raised billions of dollars on the six Swiss exchange through Global Depository Receipts, GDRs, since a cross-listing program was launched in July last year. Contemporary Amperex Technology Company, CATL, a battery heavyweight, is seeking to raise at least $5 billion through GDRs, in the largest such issuance by a Chinese company. Europe has announced requirements for zero-emission cars by 2035 and lower emissions for new cars by 55% by the end of the decade, driving demand for green vehicles. China's industrial companies are tapping into this growing demand to expand their overseas businesses, as avenues into the U.S. narrow and China's domestic market is expected to normalize. Raising money in Europe is important for these companies as they look to do business abroad and be recognized by investors and consumers, but the sums raised are not enormous relative to their market capitalizations at home. Chinese enterprises are taking the lead to ensure their industrial wares are integrated into supply chains, expanding businesses and filling gaps. As China starts its European roadshow, the plan looks like it may have legs this time, with EVs made by BYD and others becoming more common in the region and building trust among consumers. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Why housing in China is so unaffordable and how Beijing's attempts to fix it have failed. South China Morning Post report, China's housing affordability crisis is ongoing despite an unprecedented crackdown on the real estate sector. China's challenge is particularly daunting with home prices in Beijing and Shanghai having risen 10 and 12-fold, respectively, this century. The ratio of median home prices to income in Beijing is over 25, compared to 20 in Hong Kong and 7 in the U.S. Most Chinese cities have a significant income gap with the cost of housing, with the average flat in Shenzhen costing 40 times the average annual salary. The government introduced the three red lines in 2020 to halt borrowing by developers and imposed lending limits on banks, but more than two years later, the efforts to reduce prices have had limited success. The limited success of the measures raises questions about whether it was all worth it for home buyers, who are still struggling to afford a home. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Senior UK MP warns users off Chinese-run TikTok app over data security concerns. South China Morning Post report, the head of Britain's Foreign Affairs Committee, Conservative MP Alicia Kearns, has advised people not to use the Chinese social media app TikTok because of data security concerns. Kearns has referred to the concerns over data penetration by Chinese companies and how Beijing is using this data to intimidate people in the UK and around the world. Kearns advised people to delete TikTok from their phones, stating that it is not worth having that vulnerability on their phones. A spokesman for TikTok responded to Kern's allegations and stated that TikTok is enjoyed by millions of people in the UK and that they are taking steps to increase data security such as storing UK user data in their data center operations in Ireland and reducing employee access to data. 
Relations between Britain and China have been tense in recent years due to issues such as China's crackdown in Hong Kong and Britain's refusal to grant Huawei access to its 5G network. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. China developers flag worst earnings in years on historic slump. According to a Bloomberg report, 60% of 60 mainland-listed property firms in China expected losses for last year, due to a credit crunch that triggered defaults. 5% of firms turned profitable and 5% saw net income growing from the previous year, while the rest said profit fell. The figures suggest grim reading for larger players listed in Hong Kong. The deep sector downturn and debt defaults led to severe losses for real estate developers. The majority of developers that turned profitable last year relied on random events instead of business improvements, which isn't sustainable. The biggest gainer was China Fortune Land Development Company, which swung to a profit of up to 1.6 billion yuan last year. Even some of the biggest state-owned players warned of a sharp profit slide, such as Poly Developments and Holdings Group Company and China Merchants Shikou Industrial Zone Holdings Company. The worse-than-expected earnings at state firms could be a drag on the sector stocks, and the current valuation of these SOE companies could be unreasonable. Analysts predict a mild stock retreat this month due to earnings downgrades and profit warnings. Major property players listed in Hong Kong are scheduled to post full-year earnings by March 31. Last year's results are a sunk cost and could help to assess a bottom for developers, and a sales-driven stock rally may start to emerge in coming months. This is the China Brief. Today is February 6, 2023. Chinese tourists hit the road, from South Korea's restrictions to Thailand's open arms, how countries are responding. According to South China Morning Post, China ended its strict, zero-COVID policy by ending the requirement for incoming travelers to quarantine. This allowed for a sharp increase in travel within China as well as in and out of the country over the Lunar New Year holiday. For some countries that rely on tourism, the entry of many Chinese visitors will help their economies, while others have imposed restrictions on travelers from China due to COVID-19 concerns. Some experts believe that Beijing's way of defining a COVID-19 death could lead to the country's outbreak appearing less serious than it really is. The National Health Commission only classified deaths caused by pneumonia and respiratory failure as deaths caused by COVID-19. China has faced criticism for not being transparent about the severity of its COVID-19 surge, with some concerns about undercounting of deaths. China has pushed back against these claims and suggested that its rate of severe illness and death compares favorably with other nations.